Hello, welcome to Sky Sweaty Record Review, the only new music review show hosted on YouTube by a French professor immediately after getting off an elliptical. Let's talk about Imagine Dragons, okay? Let's just take one song off their new album, Origins, mysterious title. Let's take that one song and sort of explain the, the, the paradox and the difficulty of Imagine Dragons. I'm choosing the song Zero. Now, tellingly, this is a song that is a soundtrack off of the upcoming sequel to Wreck-It Ralph. Ralph Breaks the Internet. And I would say that that movie itself feels like what I call end times capitalism, but that's neither here nor there. The fact that this song is on the middle of this quite long album, and it's a soundtrack to a sequel to a movie about video games, it's not exactly rock and roll. So let's, let's talk about this song. It's called Zero, and really it's a charming pop song. Uh, it's got sort of this 80s Prince rhythm, you know, It's got that kind of 80s pop, but then these really funny 90s style lyrics, like, Hello, hello, I'm a zero, zero. Let me show you what it's like to feel. Like you're nothing that's real. I don't know. Uh, it's this really strange combination of all these things. And then over all of it is a 2010s production gloss. Lots of interesting sound parts, hyper-produced, super repetitive chorus over and over again. It's all these things. And at the end, you're sort of like, what was that? Is this one of the world's biggest rock bands? Is this a pop band that pretends to be a rock band? At times you wonder if they're an electronic dance music band. They even once take a horrible misstep into folk. I think it's safe to say that the new pop rock music has no genre. It's intentionally generic. And I would say that is the case for the most part with this album. But I don't think that means it's bad. I think it's its own thing. I think it's a hard thing for those of us who enjoy great music and music with a lot of artistic integrity to get behind. Now, in general, uh, Imagine Dragons is a band which is, I would say, best defined by their lead singer's three voices. He's got whispery verse, screamy chorus, and then occasional singy Coldplay, Chris Martin style singing. And I think the Coldplay comp is the best one to make. I have to admit, I totally missed the Coldplay train. I never took them seriously, ever. Not once. I don't know, I was at the exact wrong age and I just assumed, all right, they're just the watered down version of whatever's happening in England. And every time a new album would come out, I'd hear the new single, and I'd secretly sing along, and I would secretly actually probably love the song while espousing that I hated it and that Chris Martin was a joke and Gwyneth Paltrow sucks and all that stuff. So I totally missed out on Coldplay. So I'm trying to make up for that a little bit here with Imagine Dragons because their music is not bad. I don't know if I would call it great, but it's definitely not bad. And there's enough things in this, once again, quite long album to make it worth a listen. Um, You'll see here, I have on vinyl, the, their previous record. I got that um, to try to, I don't know, to connect with Goat. Um, if you haven't seen my previous review, I reviewed the single Machine off of the new Imagine Dragon album with Goat. Um, Goat likes Imagine Dragons, although Goat is a little bit ashamed to say so. Tying it in with, with, with Coldplay again, um, the sort of genericness that I feel is inherent in both of them. I mean, there's a lot of one title songs on this album, like Natural, Boomerang, Love, and I could go on. Like almost all the songs are just one word, which is usually a warning sign. Uh, the question is, is there a point? Like, is there a point to this? I mean, you have a hard time figuring out like, who's singing, who's the lead singer, are there musicians? There's so much electronic drums, so much keyboard, you have a hard time figuring out what's it actually about. I would say if you had to find some kind of unifying thread between this, is they're actually trying to make an anthem album for the new generation. 
there's about three or four songs that appear to want to be some kind of rallying cry. This is what it is to be young, and this is what we want. There's a song called, well, there's the song called Machine, which already is interesting about the combination between the way that we feel like we're a part of the machine and we are machines ourselves, and where does the phone end and we begin. I think it's an effective song at doing that. Uh, the song itself echoes machine-like production, and then he starts singing, and then he starts off saying, I'm not a part of the machine, and then he says he is a machine. So we're getting at a hint here that maybe there's some kind of deeper thought about the relationship between the youth and digital culture. Whoa. You see, that actually makes this sound a lot more interesting than I gave it credit for. All right, Imagine Dragons, let's, let's keep following this, this, this thought. Uh, another one is a song called Digital, which has like a jungle beat. I mean, they are all over the place with their genres on this album. Like I said, there is no genre on this album. And it's like all about this new generation. You know, we want, the lyrics are, I'm not saying this, we want a new world without the order. And he tries to get a little bit of like punk singing in there. Uh, I actually typed in my notes, uh, punk, oh no. You can see that there, punk. Oh no, that was my reaction. Talking about digital heartbeat. We don't want to change, we just want to change everything. I don't know. Another song called Love. It's all this insanely earnest music about where did we lose our love? But again, I, I don't fault bands for being too earnest. I think an overuse of irony is a sign of weakness. Whoa, that was a first on Sky Sweaty Record Review. It was an earthquake, okay. And the entire album closes with a song called Real Life, a rare two-word song, uh, which is, it really feels like an ode to his generation. Uh, it's got kind of haunting production, and it's sort of, I suppose, about the relationship between the, the digital self and the human self. So I think if the album were just that, it would be a fine album, but there's a lot of weird filler. Like this song called West Coast, which is the only song produced by them. And it is like a Subaru commercial. It is so, I had to skip it. It's the first time I think I've ever skipped a song in the history of this show. But it was like a, a, a Mumford nightmare. Just, ugh, terrible, terrible, terrible. But then other songs are interesting. You know, uh, a song called Cool Out is another one of these 80s tunes, almost like a vaporwave production. And then, amazingly, out of all this, there's a song that gets the official Sky stamp. A song that I think is good enough that I'm actively encouraging my listeners, which, judging by my recent numbers, is up to 20. So hey, even dwarves started small. Uh, I would say the song that gets the stamp is one called Bullet in a Gun. It has great production. Uh, it's very modernist production. It's mostly uh, computer production. It has these like weird, funny breaks with like an inhuman voice. You know like when you, when you take a synthesizer and you can use like a small sampler within the synthesizer and make it that each note just says the word over and over again? That's what they do. So it's like, you know, gun, 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 but better than that. That's a great song. And I think it's the most personal song too because it's all about uh, his relationship or their relationship to fame. Uh, feels though it might be a prelude to suicide, so don't do it, Mr. Dragon. You still have good music to make, if inconsistent. And that's what I would say. Uh, I don't think it's bad. I think it's easy to dismiss. And if I have sort of one, okay, well my one unifying theme of this channel is all about <laughs> being old. But if I had a second unifying theme, it would be about working hard to not dismiss things that are easy to dismiss. Even the Bohemian Rhapsody uh, tra uh, preview, I mean, review that I did. It's way too easy to dismiss. And if I could be anything, it's a critic who doesn't dismiss things. There's no power in just being blandly negative. So there's a lot to love in this album. I'd say in particular, that song, Bullet in the Gun, and the single machine is great. The question I ask myself is, the thing about Imagine Dragons, right? I mean, so you take this album, right? And it's just hit after hit after hit after hit. Uh, whatever It Takes, Believer, uh, Mouth of the River, Thunder. The first time I heard all these songs, I was like, meh. 
But now I love them. Like, especially Thunder. I mean, what a great track. What a great single. So maybe once these songs are beaten, once my mind is beaten into submission by the Imagine Dragon thing, all the time, every single time you turn on the station, it's these four, five, seven, I don't even know how many members are in this band, people from Las Vegas? Can you make art from Las Vegas? I don't know. Them and Jimmy Kimmel, I guess. I do wonder, maybe I'll end up truly loving this album, but on first play, I would have to give it my patented one sentence review. I would say it is artistically generic and aggressively genreless. So if you put those descriptions together, I think you have Imagine Dragons. I'd also add, interestingly produced, a few great songs, spottily produced. Spottily consistent, and I believe bears replaying. My final thought about Imagine Dragons, and I'm just throwing this out there. <clears throat> I should maybe even do a whole video about this because I think this is a pretty good idea. I'm pretty sure that Coldplay is to Radiohead as Imagine Dragons is to 21 Pilots. Just hear me out here. I'm not saying 21 Pilots is as good as Radiohead. But I do think that these are massive groups that defy and bend genres, that can sell out stadiums, that one of them is, I mean, they're both very popular, platinum selling album, um, artists, but I'd say 21 Pilots has a little bit more artistic authenticity, has a little bit more, well, a lot more artist, art, artistic authenticity, has a lot more understanding of what, what they're actually doing, a lot more to say than Imagine Dragons does, but I'd say it's kind of a fair comparison between, between the two groups. So I don't know. This, actually, I do want you to respond. I usually tell you not to respond, but respond. What do you think of this idea? Coldplay is to Imagine Dragons as Radiohead is to 21 Pilots. Just an idea. For my improvised trivia, I, oh, Super Mario Brothers mints. All right. As always, this has been Sky, sweating next to the oldies at the YMCA, saying, there's the camera.